Greetings, citizens. This is Legion V with my very first 100 days Minecraft hardcore video. You'll laugh, you'll cry, you may even fall in love. Anyway, in this video, I'm setting a few goals for myself. Number one, I need to establish a base of operations. Number two, I'd like to have full enchanted diamond armor and tools. Number three, I need to defeat the Ender Dragon and claim her domain for the glory of Rome. If you enjoy the video, be sure to subscribe and leave me a comment letting me know what you liked or what could be different. I plan to release more videos in this series and start additional series in the future and you don't want to miss it. With that, let's get started. Ah, day one on a brand spanking new Minecraft world. I began by doing what absolutely no other Minecraft player would do, gathering wood. I then created a crafting table, crafted an axe, gathered more wood, really groundbreaking stuff. I also saw a brown mushroom near spawn. I wouldn't need any for quite some time, but I knew if I didn't grab some now, I wouldn't be able to find it when I actually did need it. I decided to take a river tour as I looked for a place to call home. And I continued to get distracted by coal, bamboo, watermelon, and various other resources. As the sun went down, I rode down river, and I noticed some structures up on a hill and realized I had found my first village. I decided to take a look around and relieve these plebs of one of their beds and anything that they happened to have in their chests. I also figured they didn't need any of their hay bales or crops, so I requisitioned them for the Republic. I couldn't remember if I could get a brewing stand if I broke it with my hands, and yeah, turns out you, uh, you definitely cannot. I saw mobs beginning to spawn, so I bravely ran toward, and then away from them, as I searched for a place to make camp for the night. The first couple of houses that I checked had upstanding citizens at rest, and I didn't want to disturb them. I then ran across the village idiot, he gladly gave up his bed for me, and then not at all creepily stood over me as I slept. When I woke up, the sun was set to cook these spooky boys at 390 degrees for about 10 minutes, Extra crispy. I began to survey the land for a potential base when a creeper asked if I needed a friend. I told him I don't talk to strangers and he didn't take it well. A couple more spooky boys decided to leave the shade and work on their tan while this little chicken riding goober came at me. Again, I wasn't interested in new friends just now, but I was interested in this valley as a place to start building. I liked the location because it was near a village and a water source, but it was clear that I'd be spending a decent amount of time terraforming to make it usable. To prepare, I crafted a shovel, organized the various resources that I had collected so far, planted what I could, and got to work. Night was approaching fast, so I used what coal I had to make torches and start lighting up the area to make it safer. I stumbled on a ravine that definitely didn't meet OSHA standards, but should work as my first mine. A zombie came in for an unsolicited hug, and at this point my popularity was really becoming a problem. I had to forcefully tell it no, with my axe. Before I was ready to call it a night, I decided it would be a good idea to plant what the villagers had so kindly allowed me to requisition before food became a problem. It would be a long time before the hay bales ran out uh, by crafting it into bread, but I need some variety in my diet. On day three, I awoke from my luxurious bedroom beneath the stars. I know it doesn't look like much now, but I had plans to completely transform this place before the 100 days is up. I would need additional resources, not to mention better tools, to make this easier, so I began prepping the ravine I saw yesterday for my first mineshaft. To be honest, this was probably more work than just digging down in any spot that I chose, but it'll work either way. I started making progress by very quickly finding iron ore, which the sunrise decided to illuminate for me. I created a furnace to start smelting the iron, planted my bamboo for future stick trading, and made some armor, in case any more fans stopped by for hugs. I did some more exploring in the mine and stumbled across a cave when I heard water nearby. I started looking around and... did you see that? Is that a geode? 
I always have trouble finding geodes, and here was one right in my path on day three. I wanted to take a closer look, but this spooky boy told me very definitively that this was his geode, and he wasn't a subscriber, so no, I couldn't have a look. We'll win him over eventually. Before I went back up to the overworld, I found an underwater cavern that I was certain had some resources just for me. I made some doors in order to create air pockets while I explored, and found a decent amount of iron while I was at it. On day four, I wanted to add some reliable beasts of burden to my burgeoning base. Don't you love alliteration? I started adding a luxury pen for anything I could find and went looking for, oh, uh, look what I found. I had to facepalm when I remembered I needed carrots and not wheat for pigs, but I led Clarabelle here back to my pen and introduced her to her new temporary home. Don't worry, I'll make a nice barn for you someday. With the iron from the underwater cavern, I was able to complete my set of armor. I was feeling more and more like a legionary every day. On day five, I got back to terraforming all day long. On day six, my fans tried a new tactic to get my attention. Very weird. Not into it, Zomboys. I harvested my bamboo so I could save it for later. I'll need a ton for stick trades. At some point in the future, there will be a Fletcher villager who will appreciate my preparations. Day 7. Bloop. I planted a dark oak sapling I had. Yes, a single dark oak sapling. We'll talk about that later. And then I went up to visit my plebeian friends to see if there were any sheep who were interested in joining my developing community. Turns out that a couple with great taste were willing to follow me down the hill and back home to meet Clarabelle. I'd need a lot of wool in the future for a villager bed, so I thought, why wait? I turned on some smooth jazz and got the parrots and the bats achievement. I saw an enderman, and I always, always get to late in the game with a shortage of ender pearls. I made a commitment to take out any enderman who visited my base so I could get a head start on collecting ender pearls. Plus, I think they enjoy this. On day 8, I went back to the mines to keep working my way toward diamond level. I found some lava and decided it would be a good idea to legion-proof it and avoid any accidents down the road. I was lower down in the mine now and I thought I recognized some of this area even though I hadn't been here before. It turns out that this part of the cave, which connects to my mine shaft at a lower level, links back up to the lower portion of the geode cave we found before, if that makes any sense. I tried once again to get uh, to the geode and check it out. Oh, hello. Goodbye. I grabbed a sample to bring back to my base and started my ascent. I tried to go to sleep, but the zombies insisted that it was too early and it was still party time. I forcefully told them that yes, it is bedtime, and they would be cranky tomorrow if they didn't go to sleep. I found the ravine they had spawned in and added torches to try to make my sleepy time area a bit safer. When I woke up, I covered the area over the ravine. Even though I lit it up a bit, I wasn't looking forward to continually falling into it accidentally. And speaking of falling into things accidentally, I did a bit of work on the entrance to my mine now that I had some resources. Don't tell anybody, but I did not apply for the proper permits to put this structure here. But what do they want from me? I'm trying to be safe and increase my property value. It was almost day 10 and I remembered. I still don't have a shield. I corrected that, and I have to say I'm starting to look pretty, pretty, pretty good. Look at that boy. I took the shield out for a test run against my enderman neighbor. He said I fought well and looked good doing it, so he rewarded me with an enderpearl. My blood was up and I was feeling confident, so I went out to do battle and test my mettle against the things that go bump in the night. While I was out, I stumbled upon what much of my future builds would use, spruce wood. Like many other Minecrafters, I just like the look of spruce wood, and because of the way it grows, it's much easier to collect than other trees. I gathered what I could, making sure to grab as many saplings as I would need to start my own tree farm. Back at the base, I started a small area near my farm to grow trees where it wouldn't get in the way. 
I also collected my single dark oak sapling as this creeper started shouting at me that you could only grow dark oak with four saplings, not one. It kept calling me a noob and saying, haven't you ever played Minecraft before? I thanked it for the tip and bid it farewell. On day 11, I started planning to recruit some villagers to my cause. I'd need a spacious, roomy, beautiful area for them to stay, so I started building these stalls. Let's be honest, they really just need room for a bed and a job block, if that. And they love it, so yeah, I think this is going to work great. I went to make my sheep indecent so I could use their wool to start crafting beds. Tomorrow I'd be visiting the village to kidnap, uh, to, to make new friends. Day 12. Same old trick from the zombies today. I finished up my first stall, grabbed my boat, and rode over to the village. I checked the lower area of the village first, but there was no one in sight. Areas of this village spawned down by the water, but also on various levels of this hill slash mountain. Since nobody joined my call to arms down here, it was looking like I'd need to dig my way up to the top. I kept looking around the village and I started to get a sinking feeling that all the villagers had despawned or had been killed by mobs. I tried to make myself feel better by looting more of their goods, but then I swore I heard the telltale, eh, of a villager. I finally spotted a farmer and nearly broke my kneecaps in excitement to go say hi. I wasn't sure what was going on. They were all stuck down here or something, not going to their beds even though it was night, or just talking with each other about how much personal space is appropriate. In any event, I found them so it was time to go to sleep so I could transport one of these plebs home in the morning. A spooky boy tried to climb into bed with me, but I told him no thank you, this bed only fits one, and I went to sleep. In the morning, these two finished rubbing their noses together as I planned my great escape. I put down a boat, which the villager was all too happy to ride in, and began rowing it across the ground, as you do. I promised this old boy the ride of his life, and I intended to make good on it. We flung him off the cliff in our boat to the lowest layer of the village where we could get to the water. A couple times we got interrupted or stuck, so I had to break the boat so I could place it somewhere off the path dirt since you can't row the boat from path blocks to grass blocks. This whole process could really have been a lot worse. I wouldn't say it was easy getting the villager all the way back, but at least I didn't run into anything where the farmer insisted on going in the opposite direction, got stuck in a corner, or refused to move when I wanted to. I eventually had the chance to block in the area in front of the stall to release my prisoner, or friend, I mean. And yep, spoke too soon. At the first opportunity, the pleb escaped and made a run for it. I trapped him in a boat and brought him back around for round two. I eventually settled him into the stall, got the job block to work for Fletcher Trades, and locked in trade for sticks. There will be many more in the future. I need at least two villagers here to start a villager breeder because I will need a lot of librarians for enchantments that I want, so I started on a second luxury apartment. It started to rain and then I heard thunder, so I took that as my cue to call it a day. On day 14, Mighty Jupiter must have been listening to me. In the morning, not only did I run into a zombified villager, but it was wearing a helmet so the sun wouldn't turn it extra crispy. I led it back toward my base, trapped it in a boat, and quickly built up a cave around it. I wanted my new zombie friend to be safe until I had a chance to get a potion of weakness and a golden apple for a cure. I didn't necessarily want to wait for that time to start breeding villagers, so I went back to where I found the pile of villagers earlier and abducted one more friend. We went down the same cliffside dive of doom, rode back home, and once again arrived at the luxury apartments with no incident. I thought I was being clever this time by more closely blocking off any escape routes, but of course didn't notice that I had missed one block. The villager used the opportunity to choose a profession without my input. That wasn't going to work for me, so I removed the job block, along with the villager's newfound purpose in life, and tried again. This time, I nearly suffocated us both inside cobblestone, but quick action saved the day. This is when I started to remember all the reasons I loathe villagers. Between the escape attempt, choosing the wrong job blocks, refusing to move, getting stuck in corners, pushing in the wrong direction, I was losing my patience. Finally, the new recruit was safe at home with a new profession of trading sticks for emeralds for eternity. I was pretty excited. I know it may not look like much, but having two villagers at your base is a game changer long term. I was now going to be able to start stockpiling emeralds, breeding villagers for new recruits, and eventually start getting librarians for enchanted books and OP gear. 
I watched the sunset and thought about how things were looking up. On day 15, I went back to the mines. I wanted to get down to bedrock and I wasn't quite there yet. On the way I found some additional iron and you may have noticed that it's day 15 and I haven't made any iron tools yet. I typically like to prioritize armor, then when I start finding better ores or just a ton of iron, that's when I'll make an iron pickaxe. I smelted the iron I just found, crafted an iron pickaxe, and celebrated by mining my first gold ingots. Shortly after, I ran into a lava lake, which stopped my progress for the day. Day 16 was kind of chore day. I needed to tend to my crops and sugarcane. I'd be needing to expand this soon, as I'd need much more for book and paper trades. I harvested my bamboo to keep on top of my stick inventory, and then went back to my favorite plebs for some trades. My uber spruce trees had also grown, so I went to gather all of the wood from my tree farm and replant new trees. I also cleaned up the area in front of my villager stalls. I intended to let these little deviants out soon to start breeding, and I wanted to make sure they couldn't get far. You may notice something about my design that's going to make my plans difficult, but I wasn't thinking about it at the time, and yeah, I end up figuring it out in a couple days. I placed a magical floating bed down for what I hoped would be my newest conscript villager, and continued to spruce up the place a little bit. You get it? Spruce up? I'm using spruce wood? Yeah? You like that? I'm sure I'm the first one that's ever thought of that. I released my two best friends into the wild, but it turns out their massive foreheads were stopping them from going anywhere. I gave them a bit more clearance and then absolutely blew their minds by making it rain carrots. More than they had ever seen in their lifetimes. They stood in awe of my carrot wealth, and because I was feeling magnanimous, I decided to throw some wheat their way too. I actually wasn't sure if that would do anything since you can't eat wheat directly, but I'm sure they appreciate it nonetheless. But you know who can eat wheat directly? My growing mass of cows and sheep. I kept up with breeding my animals to ensure I'd have enough wool for beds and leather for books. I went back down to the mine and planned on taking a turn to avoid the lava lake. I started digging to the right because I'm sure to be safe in that direction. Like I said, I started digging to the left because that would definitely be safe. I grabbed some gold ore in my path and continued the mine shaft down to where I could hopefully find some diamonds. On day 18, I hit a snag. My mine shaft intersected with an underwater cave. I really didn't feel like trying to find another direction to dig again, so instead I went in to assess the situation. It really wasn't that many levels down to continue digging past the water, so I decided instead to build up on either side of my mine shaft where it would be underwater then fill it in with random blocks to remove the water, then dig it back out, and there you go. Water free. I reached bedrock and planned on just starting a mine in one direction before I went back up. But almost immediately as I started digging, I ran into diamonds. Now this is obviously awesome, and you can see how happy I was, but I was concerned with what this meant for the future of diamond mining. As soon as I get to bedrock, I find diamonds. Does this mean that the Minecraft gods are going to make it up to me by making it impossible to find diamonds from this point forward? Doesn't matter. That's a future problem for a future legion. On day 19, my base was looking good. It's starting to level out and look clean, but my farms were still a mess. I wanted to start some better organized farms for each type of crop I wanted. I'll typically build farms off a single water source with tilled soil four blocks out on every side. Any further out from four, and you need additional water sources to saturate the soil. So this setup gives decent yield on crops, and it's a manageable size. On day 20, I continued my organizational efforts by finishing up my farm project. The plots of land were prepped and ready, so I planted my wheat, beetroot, carrots, and potatoes. All of these would help in the future for villager trades and breeding. I checked on my villagers, but no hanky-panky yet. I added a chest for leftover bamboo, fed the future cheeseburgers, and cleaned up my old temporary farm area. On day 21, it was back to terraforming. I wanted a large amount of level ground for future builds. I had a couple builds in mind for this 100 days, but this whole area would eventually be used for future videos. I then started setting up an area for an expanded sugarcane farm. I didn't feel like bringing water onto the land, so instead, I brought land out into the water. I used what I had so far to fill in the new farm. 
I was putting on some finishing touches when Neptune sent some demons out of the deep after me. I wasn't sure what I had done to bring about Neptune's wrath, but at the end of the day it wasn't a problem. I easily slayed them, but got no trident for my troubles. With that distraction out of the way, I began placing down trapdoors between all of the sugarcane. I wanted to be able to run between the dirt areas without falling into the water, and I also didn't want the harvested sugarcane to fall into the sea. I started off day 22 by cleaning a few undesirables out of my base. I checked on my villagers and at this point I was starting to get suspicious. I had been giving them tons of food and they refused to pop out a baby pleb. I'll give it a bit longer and see what happens. I was working to fill in more of my farms when a wandering llama enthusiast spawned in. I wasn't really interested in his trades, but I was interested in becoming a llama enthusiast myself. I kept trying to trap the llamas so the leads would detach without them getting mad at me, but it wasn't as easy as it sounds. After placing a ton of blocks to try to separate them, I finally succeeded. My reward was two shiny new leads and two new best pals. Sorry, villagers. I led them over to my animal pen and proceeded to tame them and get the best friends forever achievement. Day 23. Something's up. My villagers have taken enough food to last a few years, they're doing plenty of nosy kisses, but they refuse to breed. I sat there for a minute thinking about it and then it hit me. I built their entire ground area out of slabs. I'm guessing the half slabs are preventing spawns inside their pen, which is preventing new villagers from spawning in. I replaced the slabs with full blocks, gave them some additional carrots for good measure, and asked Ceres to send us plenty of future trade monkeys. And speaking of future trade monkeys, I was going to need lots of leather to make books, bookshelves, and lecterns for my librarian trades. Bad news for you, Clarabelle, Clarabelle, and Clarabelle. I also gathered plenty of sugarcane to turn into paper for the same empire-building capitalist reasons. I went to check on progress with my villagers, and it turns out the slabs were the culprit. We now have a third willing worker, happy to be locked in a 3 by one area for eternity. Now that we had the limited villager problem solved, it was time to expand the villager barracks area for the new recruits and craft books out of the materials I had been gathering to prepare for librarians. On day 24, I maintained uncomfortable eye contact with this enderman in an attempt to get him closer to me. But just like when I tried this trick in real life, it just scared him off. It was a great day for capitalism. I went to see my stick boys for some trades, worked a bit on the farms, and then went to check on my zomboy. It looked nice and comfy in the cobblestone cave, so I gave it some privacy. I cleaned up the temporary area I had been using for villager breeding because I already had two villagers and they were ready to turn into librarians. I planned on making a larger breeder soon, but in the interim, I really wanted to get a mending villager so I could use the three diamonds I found a few days ago for a pickaxe without having to worry about breaking it. I got everything prepped for the next day so I could do everyone's absolute favorite thing in the whole wide world. Rerolling librarians until they finally give us the enchantment we want. At least that was the idea for day 25, but my villager was broken. He refused to use the lectern as a job block, even though it was the only one that was close. I finally gave in and broke the temporary pen to see what was up, and it turns out this villager really, really wanted to be a farmer. I had to put my foot down and explain to this villager that a life of tilling the land was not in the cards. He was going to go to college, and he was going to trade me books. After another temper tantrum, followed by another escape, I was finally able to start rolling for librarian trades. You can probably guess how this went. I kept breaking and replacing the lectern to refresh the enchanted book trade until I got mending. Honestly, it could have taken longer because after a couple minutes of this, I did actually get mending. I rushed to grab what I needed to make the trade and lock mending into place. Once that was done, I prepared to get the mending villager back into his apartment, but it wasn't night yet and I didn't trust him to go quietly back into the correct spot. While waiting for nighttime, I goofed around for a bit in my mine, and by the time I came back up, I had nearly missed my window to rush the villager to bed. The sun was rising, but I quickly broke the boat and locked my prisoner slash friend back up. Now that I was starting to get enchanted books, I was going to need an anvil. I took a look through my inventory, and it turned out I was a bit short on iron. Luckily, I had leftover ingots that I quickly smelted and used to create my first anvil. 
Once I had the anvil, I used my three diamonds to craft a diamond pickaxe and got ready to add mending. I needed to name my first pickaxe and I decided to use the same name as my real life pickaxe from back when I was a prospector out west. Old Reliable. I took Old Reliable for a spin in the mines and it was such a relief to be using a diamond pickaxe instead of a stone or iron one. Things were only going to get better as soon as I could get efficiency and unbreaking. Now that I had a mending villager, I started to prep a new villager breeder. I'd be needing tons more librarians, and I'd need a place that could quickly pop out new villagers. I started with a basic plus sign shape, stripped down my sheep for wool, and started adding beds to the end of each corridor for villagers and villager babies. In order for the villagers to get freaky, they'd also need a food source. I used the center of my new structure to plant as many carrots as I could fit, so the villagers could automatically get food over time. On day 27, I did some maintenance on my farms before bringing any carrots I had harvested back to the villager breeder to make it rain once again. Before too long, the breeder was already working. I thought it would also be a good idea to start taking steps toward zombie villager cures. I still have my one zombie villager, and I might accidentally infect others for better trades in the future. I'd need blaze rods from the nether, so I went down into my mine to where I found a lava lake, plopped down some water to make obsidian, and got to mining. It took a while, but I eventually got enough obsidian with some to spare and ran back to the surface. I picked a spot off to the side of my base to put up another portal, grabbed some flint and steel, and lit the portal. On day 28, I stifled my whimpering and crying long enough to walk through the nether portal. Until I get full enchanted diamond armor, I will be terrified of the nether. Every single thing here is out to get me, so I wanted to quickly get what I needed, then go home. I tried to collect what resources I could while I was here, and also play hide and seek with a ghast. My typical strategy when I start in the nether is to not get lost. To that end, I'll typically pick a direction and move in a straight line either by building across gaps, or placing torches on the ground as breadcrumbs leading back to my portal. Whenever I found something unsafe, like a lava stream, I legion-proofed it to avoid accidents. Eventually, when my path opened up and I had a clear view ahead, I noticed something. A single turret sticking up through the ground from another fortress. This is what I was looking for, and I guess I found one? I only noticed the one small part, but it should work. I built my way down, and what do you know? There was a blaze spawner on top of the turret I had spotted. I needed to be quick and grab a few blaze rods before I got overwhelmed. As you can see, it wasn't going great, but I wasn't dead yet, so that was good. I kept smacking these spicy candelabras until one was kind enough to drop me a blaze rod. I hung around a bit longer to see what I could collect before I got too scared, and that number turned out to be three. I didn't want to be flash fried just yet, so I ran back to safety. When I emerge from my nether portal, this isn't right. It drives me nuts when this happens. For whatever reason, my portal didn't link back up to the overworld correctly back at my base. I spawned in somewhere underground in a random cave. There wasn't much I could do, so I began digging up to figure out where I was. When I emerged, I appeared to be underwater somewhere. I knew I'd be coming this way again, so I marked out the ground with a pillar of cobblestone so I could stop the flow of water down into my staircase leading to the portal. Fortunately, I could see my base from where I was, so I swam back home to relative safety and organized all the loot I had brought home from the nether. On day 29, I started prepping for villager cures. I'd need splash potions of weakness, and for that you need fermented spider eyes, which you can craft using sugar, a spider eye, and a brown mushroom. I'd also need gunpowder to make it a splash potion. I needed the blaze rods to make blaze powder in order to power my brewing stand. I made some bottles of water for my potions and got to brewing. I'd also need golden apples, so I used what gold I had to make one. Now that I had what I needed, I went to say hi to my buddy, Zombie Villager. I opened up his cave a bit because I have terrible aim, then threw the splash potion of weakness at him and fed him the golden apple. I was a bit worried because he was supposed to have particle effects around him to indicate the cure was working, but I heard the proper noises so I think it just has something to do with my optifine settings. One of my iron golems was sad about the cure because he wasn't able to hulk smash the zombie in his territory. Maybe next time, bud. I stood around waiting for the cure and then, 
Plunk, I had cured my first zombie villager. I didn't have a farmer to trade with yet, and I wanted to turn my farms into emeralds. So I locked this guy into a farmer for lower produce trades and released him from his boat. It was nighttime, so he ran to the villager breeder beds instead of his stall, and honestly, I wasn't willing to fight him on this, so I left him there. Now that I had a farmer villager for trades, I thought it would be a good idea to plant pumpkin seeds. Once I maxed out trades on potatoes and beetroot, I wanted to be able to use the pumpkin trades for additional emeralds. While I was running around, I noticed my iron golem left me an ender pearl as a present. You shouldn't have. And speaking of iron golems, while I was prepping for my next librarian villager, I heard a golem getting damaged. I went to see what was up, and Dingus McGee over here had gotten stuck under a low roof in the villager breeder. Looks like he got it figured out eventually, but I guess there's not much room for a brain in that big noggin. I started re-rolling my new librarian, and this was taking forever. He refused to give me what I wanted, Unbreaking 3. He insulted me by offering Unbreaking 1, then after tons more re-rolling, Unbreaking 2. I was slightly tempted, but I kept rolling, and finally, he gave me Unbreaking 3. Jerk. I quickly bought the enchantment and added it to Old Reliable. This was going to save me tons of experience mending my pickaxe since durability would go down slower. The last thing I wanted to do today was create an auto composter. I wouldn't want to keep all my produce long term, and I could always use the bone meal, so I did a simple setup using hoppers to feed anything I wanted to compost from a chest into a composter, and then another hopper to fill a chest with bone meal. On day 31, I harvested sugarcane to make some additional paper for trades with my nerds. There was a slight chance if I leveled these boys up, they would unlock enchantments that I wanted so I didn't have to roll for them on a new villager. I then went down to my mine to grab a bucket of lava for entirely innocent reasons. When I got back to the surface, I accidentally dropped the lava next to an iron golem. What's even worse is that I timed picking the lava back up poorly, so I burned any iron that the golem dropped. I decided to accidentally try one more time, this time dropping the lava higher up to avoid burning any drops. But of course, right before the golem died, he climbed up onto a composter just to make sure any iron drops would be consumed by lava. What a guy. I went back to the geode part of my mind to collect the gold I saw here when I first discovered this cave. I wanted to explore further into this part of the cave, and I was feeling a bit more confident now with full iron armor, a shield, and an iron sword. I was doing fine until I got to this one part where I tried to make a staircase up and see what was over this rise. Every time I tried to climb up, something was waiting around the corner or falling from a higher place. And every time my health got low and I had to retreat to eat and heal. Even to the point of hiding in this small area so I had time to heal. What did I ever do to these mobs? I continued to mine my way up and do battle with any who would stand in my way. As I continued to dig out of the cave, I found the surface. I took a look around and I wasn't far at all from my base. I came out right near the mini jungle biome. I got right to it, smelting all the iron ore I had collected while mining. On day 34, I looked at my villagers and decided they'd be a whole lot more likable if their trades were lower. I grabbed a couple that I had been using for paper trades and enchantments, broke their job blocks, and had them jump into a boat. I then rode them into their new temporary Airbnb. I could tell they loved it. I waited until night until I could find some zombies, but these wannabe zoo bats started pecking at me, reminding me that sleep was important and it had been too long since I got some Zs. I shooed them away, then led a couple zombies into the cave where my volunteers were waiting in their boats. Once my nerds were zombified, I followed the same process of throwing a potion of weakness at them, then feeding them golden apples to cure. I had played with the Optifine settings and fixed the particle effects, so now I could see that the cures were working. I took a close look at this nerd and bam, there we go, cured villager. I checked his trades and the unbreaking enchantment went from 27 emeralds to 2. I'd call that a win. Mending was down from 26 to 1 emerald, so I stocked up on as many books as I'd need for the foreseeable future. I decided to enchant my shield so I wouldn't need to continue making more, and it needed a name. I thought for a bit, but the only thing that came to mind was Stonewall Jackson. Don't judge me, you think of a better name. At night, I wrestled to get my goobers back into their stalls, but for whatever reason, they couldn't make up their minds on which one looked better. 
I had to remind them that they were exactly the same, and they finally picked a bed and went to sleep. On day 35, I re-rolled librarians all day long. Just, just have a look. See how this was going for me. I continued rolling, but I wasn't coming up with anything. I was hoping for efficiency, but I'd take enchantments for my sword, prot 4 for my armor, whatever. But they kept giving me garbage at every roll. I eventually settled for fortune 2 for my pick, but I was getting low on emeralds. I went back to my farmer to cash in on my hard work on the farm, and got a decent amount stocked back up. The next day I went back to rolling librarians, and for probably the fifth time I got efficiency 1. I refused to combine that many books just for Efficiency 5, so the only option was to keep refreshing for trades. At this point I was desperate after being at this for 4 days straight, so when I saw Efficiency 3 I decided to lock in the trade. I could settle for combining 2 of these and using Efficiency 4 on my tools, which was still a big help. I made the Efficiency 4 book, then combined it with the Fortune 3 I had made earlier, then went to add the new enchantments to Old Reliable, but of course, I didn't have enough levels. I went out to collect produce and make more paper for trades, and then stopped by all my various trade monkeys to sell what I gathered. The emeralds were nice, but I was doing it to gain experience I'd need in order to finish my enchants on Old Reliable. I ended up with 17 levels at the end, which was one more than I needed to enchant my pickaxe. I put them both into my anvil, and just about maxed out what I wanted on my pickaxe. What are you doing out here? Ploop. Day 40. You know what it's time for. I needed to go take the new and improved Old Reliable out for a spin. I started strip mining and I did end up finding a few diamonds. I got very nervous though as I was about to mine them, because I could see lava dripping from the ceiling. I very gingerly started mining around it, ready to run or close up any area that started spewing lava on my head. If I counted correctly, there was a beefy 7 vein of diamonds. And with the beautiful Fortune 3 now on my pickaxe, that turned into 17 diamonds total. I was very pleased. On day 41, I started gathering some resources for a build I wanted for my base. You can probably guess what I have in mind based on the building blocks, chests, hoppers, and trapdoors. I thought a mob grinder would be a good addition to start getting some random mob drops and help with XP farming for future enchantments. I wanted to build it a decent distance from my base, and also high enough in the air that I could hopefully avoid mobs on the ground and in caves taking up my mob cap. I built up over the water near my nether portal, carrying, I hope, all I would need to get this set up. I started with a small platform where I placed my mob drop collecting chests, hoppers to automatically collect, and the beginning of my mob dropper shoot. As I started to build up, and sorry, don't get dizzy, the sun was rising on day 42. I went up I think about 21 blocks so that the fall damage wouldn't insta-kill mobs, but they should be weak enough to falcon punch them to death if I wanted. From there, I built 8 blocks out on every side for water pathways, and put up walls around each path. I didn't realize it at the time, but like most of the times I build a mob grinder, I forgot to build this wall up too high instead of one. I filled in the floor where mobs would spawn, put up walls around the area, and began placing trapdoors. I made an infinite water source so I wouldn't have to keep going down for more, and placed the water into the channels. There was some voodoo magic going on here, and the water hit an invisible wall. This was when I realized I had made the channels too short. I started to remove the trapdoors I had just finished installing, and started building up the second floor layer. I wanted to finish, but Phantom spawned in to tell me to take a break. I jumped over the side, leaving a water elevator to get back up, and went to bed. When I got back the next day, I finished removing the trapdoors and increasing the height of my floor. I tested the water to make sure it ran all the way to my droppy hole without going over, and then satisfied it was working, did the rest. I finished up by using slabs for my ceiling so no mobs should spawn on top, reinstalling the trapdoors, which, by the way, I'm still not 100% certain of the purpose of these trapdoors. I think I kind of know now, I always just used to put them in because I saw 
other Minecrafters doing it, but now I think it's because it makes the mobs more easily walk into these channels so they can flow down the water in the chute. But, you know, I know everybody else does it, so I figure there must be a point. I removed my water elevator and rode it back down to my base. I climbed back up to see how the mob grinder was doing, and it was working great. Mobs were already loaded in, ready for a slicing and dicing, and I had a functioning mob grinder. On day 44, I realized I had unintentionally also made a pretty solid vantage point for my base while making the mob grinder. I'd be coming up here every once in a while to see how my base was progressing overall. With that done, it was back to trading with my goobers for emeralds and experience. And while I was doing this, I kept hearing endermen even though I didn't see any anywhere in my base. I eventually figured out they were spawning in a ravine I had covered up early on, so I went down to light up the area and do some friendly sparring with the Endermen. I used some of the emeralds and experience I was getting from trades to begin combining mending and unbreaking books. I was going to need at least 7 or 8 of these total, so I wanted to get them all ready now. I took a gold hunting detour to the nether so I could be prepared for more golden apples, then forgot when I got back that my portal came back into the overworld in the wrong spot. I began climbing my stairs, grumbled about the good old days when nether portals worked, and used some ladders to get back out of my cobblestone chute that ascends through the ocean to bring me back home. I ended up finding enough gold nuggies to craft three more golden apples, thank you Fortune 3. I used a bed as bait to abduct some friends from my villager breeder. Nothing nefarious, we were just going for a nice row over the grass. When I came back to grab another, I was trying to get one of these lazy bones out of bed when this little brat decided to lie down on the ground rather than come with me for a boat ride. This is what I get for trying to give them nice things. When I broke the bed, the villager took damage and I thought I had accidentally hit him. I prepared for death by Iron Golem, but the sweet embrace of the void never came. I guess the bed must have hit him somehow, but I was safe and I went back to uh, trapping villagers in boats. I ended up with three villagers so I could cure them all at once with a second cure for two of them. I gave them all new zombie best friends and let them snack on the villagers long enough to turn them green. At this point you know the drill. Chuck a potion, give them golden nom noms. Once cured, my farmer was offering one emerald for three beetroot trades. I'm not sure why I don't see more people choose this trade with farmers. Seems like it's always pretty easy to get near one-to-one -one trades for beetroot, and the stuff literally grows out of the ground. That's a good deal in my book. The Stick Boys trades were okay, but I'd need more work on them. So back to infecting them for a second time and curing once more. When I was finished, I got them all lined up for Nighty Night, and you guessed it, he didn't walk literally one block to get into the bed next to him, he walked all the way over to try to steal my bed. I had kind of expected this, so I broke the bed. He then threw a fit and jumped back into the boat just to be a jerk. I tried my other Fletcher, who is no longer a Fletcher. I did something wrong, and now this guy wanted a new job block. Whatever, I just wanted them all in their stalls, and then I'd be able to figure it out in the morning. The next day, I played musical job blocks with this villager for a little while until I was able to get him back to the stall with the proper fletching job. Back by my chests, a villager appeared out of nowhere, no idea where he came from, and decided to take a job as a mason. I broke the stone cutter, so he ran over to a composter so he could start wrecking all of my farms. Unfortunately, he stepped on my rare spicy fire pumpkins and caught fire. It couldn't be helped. Nothing I could do. On day 48, I started trading some of the sticks I had been saving up for a while. I wanted to make more tools and start enchanting, so I'd need XP. I started with an axe. I crafted a new diamond axe and brought it to my anvil to enchant and name. And give me a break. I hit a creative block, so choppy boy it is. I went back to grab my subpar efficiency 3 books, combined them, and added efficiency 4 to choppy boy. I took it for a spin, and once again, this was so much better than my old iron axe. I went back to the mines and actually had a really successful trip. I continued strip mining and found a few different diamond veins. Even when I found a single diamond ore, Fortune 3 turned that into four diamonds. I will take that for sure. I counted up my riches so far and moved on. So I wanted to show this whole thing because it looks so fake, but I promise you I did not plant any of these diamonds here. 
I was running through a cave and stopped because I heard mobs through the wall. I figured there might be a spawner, so I turned to mine my way in and check. Literally right behind where I was mining was a six vein of diamond. I would never have found it if I didn't just decide to check out random noises. At the end, I was happy with my trip after finding a total of 23 diamonds with Fortune 3, so I started to head back. When I got back, I got organized. Space in my chest was starting to become a problem, and kind of messy, but I wanted to wait until I built an actual house before I worried about organizing any storage. I took out all of the diamonds I had to see if there was enough to build a full set of diamond armor. I placed it in my inventory in the configurations of each piece of armor, and it looked like I was in good shape. I could make armor, a sword, and a shovel, and still have 17 diamonds left over. On day 50, I realized my 100-day journey was halfway over. I surveyed what I had built so far, and honestly, I spent a ton of time so far on villager trades, not so much on building my base. The next 50 days, I'd work on that a bit. I wanted to keep making and enchanting diamond tools, so I went around my base and harvested what produce I could. I went to trade with my farmer for those sweet, sweet beetroot and pumpkin trades, and created a diamond shovel. I put my shovel into the anvil to add mending and unbreaking, and came up with the perfect name, Scoopy Doo. I can't be certain, but I'm pretty sure I heard a very soft, collective, ruh row from all the dirt I still needed to terraform near my base. I added Efficiency 4 to Scoopy-Doo and took it out for a test drive. I have to say, I know it doesn't take much to mine dirt regularly, but there's something about getting the first tool that can insta-mine any block. I was absolutely enjoying myself as I continued my terraforming adventures around the base. I placed a couple chests for the sole purpose of holding dirt. I wanted to clear out this entire back area of my land that I was surveying from the viewpoint at my mop grinder. Eventually, I wanted to use an idea that I had to build my home on this larger area, potentially into the cliffside, so I could build a partial underground area to my home. I wasn't quite sure yet, but I knew I'd get use out of this area if I was able to flatten it out. Scoopy-Doo was a bit worse for the wear, so I went to do some trades for the experience to mend it back up a bit. After that, I got back to my grueling work of making all my dirt say jinkies. I was still hard at work when I started to hear the sounds of villagers being attacked. Something was definitely wrong because I wasn't holding my villager disciplining mallet and I wasn't wearing my villager stomping boots. I went back to take a look and somehow this little ankle biting jerk not only spawned with all my torches around, but found its way into my villager stalls to attack the librarians I had worked so hard to get. I went to check the damage and found that the baby zombie had taken enough nibbles to infect three of my villagers in the short time it took me to walk over. Well, whatever. I guess this gives me an unprompted opportunity for some zombie villager cures, which would net me better trades in the future. I went to check my inventory, and unfortunately for one of my zombie friends, I could only make two golden apples. Nah, I can't leave them hanging. You know this means we have to go back to the nether for more gold. I prepped the villagers by putting them in boats and entered my nether portal. The trip was uneventful for the most part. I found a few gold veins, mined what I found with Fortune 3, and headed back to my broken nether portal so I could start the trek back home. I wrapped up the day by crafting the last golden apple that I'd need. Day 54 and I started the next round of curing. In with the potion of weakness, and down the hatch with more golden apples. More than they deserve, really. I checked the trades and there was a silver lining to all of this. I was going to be able to get more emeralds in the future, and get to fully enchanted gear sooner. I needed to wait for night so I could break the boats and let my villagers go back to their beds without any incident. Yeah, right. I decided to spend the time clearing out more of the dirt at the back of my base since I was nearing completion of this project. Some areas got down to cobblestone, so I cleared it out and replaced the dirt blocks to make the whole area more consistent. At night, I broke the boats, and it's an absolute miracle. All the villagers went straight to bed without trying to steal a different bed, or go on walkabout throughout my base. On day 55, I wanted to wrap up most of the latest terraforming project. I filled in the remaining dirt, cleaned up my inventory, and did enough trades to bring Scoopy-Doo back up to a durability level that I was comfortable with. At sunset, I ascended to my viewpoint to look at my progress, and I was pleased. This is plenty of room to complete at least one build in this 100 days, plus additional in my next 100 days. Day 56 was about security. 
The ankle biter zombie shook me to the core, so I enchanted my first diamond sword so if any came back, I could give him the old razzle dazzle. I also wondered how it evaded my torchlight in order to spawn, so just in case it ran in from outside of my base area, I decided to build a wall around the perimeter. And yes, I felt very American doing this. On day 57, it was time to make good on a promise I made about 50 days ago. I wanted to clear an area out off to the side of my base for a new barn, mainly so I didn't have to hear that mooing and stomping constantly while working on other things. You may be saying, but Legion, why make a barn when you don't even have a house yet? You've been at it for over 50 days. And you're not wrong. But you have to remember, every good legionary knows the value of their beasts of burden. You have to treat them right if you want to keep eating cheeseburgers for dinner every night. I went pretty traditional for this build, using logs for the support beams in the front and back, and different types of deep slate that I had cut in the stone cutter for the walls. I had been stockpiling lanterns from villager trades, so I'd be using those in any future builds rather than the torches. I was liking how the barn structure was turning out so far, but I really hated what comes next. The roof. I hate making a roof on any structure because I know I will get it wrong. I unclenched my butt cheeks and got to work. At first glance it doesn't look bad, but there was still some time for something to get messed up. For the interior I made four large pens. Right now I only had sheep and cows, but I wanted it to be ready in case I wanted to get pigs or chickens in the future. These should be large enough to hold what I need, and I think all my buddies are going to love it. Speaking of buddies, it was time to move them into their new home. I started with the sheep, and as I opened up the floodgates, I knew there was no way I'd get 100% of these wool factories into the new pen, but I got enough in to be comfortable, knowing I could always recover the population through breeding, and then went out to cull the stragglers. Bloop, bloop. For the cows, I thought it would be easier to magically turn a few into stakes before I opened the gate. This way I only had to lead a few over to the new pen. I was able to wrap up the process after a couple trips back to tempt them with the succulent wheat, and now we were totally good to go. Bloop. I finally noticed it. I did screw up. One side of the roof ends at a lower point than the other. Ugh. I'll fix it. Day 59. I tried, guys. I really did. You probably noticed that redoing the roof didn't help. Now it's still uneven, just in a different way. I'm finding it hard to care right now. You might be wondering why I'm putting up more walls around my villagers. I hear you saying, but Legion, you already put a wall up around your base. I'm sure your villagers are fine. Well, you would be wrong. Why didn't you warn me that apparently zombies still had very easy access to my villagers and were happy to use them for a midnight snack? So anyway, I went back to the nether to get more gold because I just love doing this. This is how I want to spend my pastime. Gathering gold nuggies in the nether, crafting gold ingot, making more golden apples, using them to cure plebs. Yeah, that's like a uh, Saturday night for me. In any event, I got more cheap enchanted book trades, stocked up on what I thought I'd need, and then almost as if the weather was acknowledging that the world was back to normal, the rain cleared up and the sun came out. I think I figured out the roof on the barn and I added a couple details to the front. I liked the contrast between trapdoors and the wood blocks, and it was looking sharp. I put my sweet princes to bed, and expanded my pumpkin farm a bit since I was burning through them like crazy with my trades. Things aren't looking too shabby at my base. Farms are doing okay, don't pay any attention to the barn with only the appearance of a roof from the front, that's not important, and I had plenty of open area to build. I made more combo mending unbreaking books since I had the levels for it, fed my animals to max out the new pen real estate, and played with the friendly birds that keep stopping by. I'm pretty sure I must have spilled breadcrumbs on my shirt or something and it keeps attracting them. No breadcrumbs for you tonight, Boyds. I went back to adding to my ranks of librarians, or at least I would have if villagers knew how to function. I once again removed job blocks to hopefully fix the villagers and stop by to say hi to my friendly neighborhood Enderman. I got back to my villagers, and I wasn't sure exactly what I was looking for, but when I saw Infinity, I thought, why not get a bow? It was day 61 by this point, and I haven't done any ranged combat. I bought the book, combined it with Unbreaking 3, and went to enchant my bow. Of course, I didn't have enough levels, so it was back to being American, buying things I didn't need. When I got enough levels, I enchanted my bow and decided to call it Pot Shot. You and I both know that I don't plan to play fair when I can attack from a distance. 
I took pot shot for a spin and finally got the take aim achievement after hours and hours of gameplay in this world. Yeah, kind of sad, I know. Unsurprisingly, the next librarian I got started by offering Infinity, the enchantment I literally just locked in with the previous villager. I kept rolling until I saw Protection 3, an enchantment I need for my armor. And yes, of course, I'd love it if one of these nerds offered me Protection 4 so I could get the max level in one go, but I was still having flashbacks about the re-rolling these boys for three days straight, so I gave in and I locked in the trade. I made my first Protection 4 book and placed it in my chest where I was planning out all the enchantments I'd like for my future armor. I still had a way to go, but eventually I'd need four of these. I finished the day by restocking books the easy way, purchasing bookshelves from the boys, placing them down, and breaking them. I was starting to have an impressive collection of villagers from my capitalist empire. I actually wasn't sure if I wanted them in this configuration long term, or if I wanted to make something a bit more grand in the future. But once again, that's a future problem for future Legion. I cleaned up the place a bit, and put in what I hoped would be the last couple villager stalls for the foreseeable future to get what I needed for my gear. I offered the spaces to some willing volunteers and then locked them in for their own safety. They can leave anytime they want, honestly. I was going to try to make this newbie villager work through the night, but I heard thunder and didn't want my whole market area here burning down. I ran back to bed to uh, sleep in the rain. I really need to build a house soon. When I got back to it, we had another prison break. Not that this is a prison, I already told you they want to be here. Then this old boy decided to scale the walls like Ezio, almost as if he'd been planning this since he arrived at my married compound. I gave him points for ingenuity, but I did actually need him to come back and stop trying to take random jobs around the base. He nearly escaped again, but I finally got the situation under control. He ended up giving me efficiency 5, and this was a bit difficult. My tools already had efficiency 4 through my grueling work, and this guy swooped in with something I needed many days ago. Still, it could come in handy so I didn't have to keep combining books to level them up from efficiency 3. It is what it is. I locked it in so I could more easily get max levels on my tools. I continued to level the same villager to see what other trades would be offered, and he had the audacity to then offer me efficiency 4. Like I would ever need that now. And for double the price! Do you believe this guy? Anyway, I upgraded Old Reliable and went to work on the last villager. These two must have been conspiring because this time, the new guy decided to give me the exact same two enchantments next to each other. I'm not even sure why that would be an option, but I was kind of numb to all of this by now. You know how I was hoping yesterday would be the last couple villagers? Well, I actually do need a bit more, so I added some protection to the other side of my market area, abducted two more volunteers from the breeder area, and got to work. I'll spare you the details, but in the end I got Silk Touch for a second pickaxe, and Looting 3 for my sword. The end was in sight, but I was fresh out of volunteers. I made it rain more carrots for the last two villages available, and then felt incredibly awkward as they started making a baby before I had the time to leave. I hid in the corner gently weeping while I waited for them to finish. I didn't have all the enchantments I'd need just yet, but I had plenty of diamonds so I wanted to at least craft the gear. Even if I had no intention of wearing such basic, non-magical garments, I at least could organize everything in my chest, showing my intentions for what books needed to be combined with which armor pieces. Oh, this is going to take so many levels to enchant. On day 68, I was greeted by a newly spawned golem in a very unfortunate situation. It spawned too close to a low ceiling and couldn't seem to work out how to get out of this predicament. I calmly watched all of this go down and, no, that's not weird at all. Are you helping? I don't see you doing anything about it. Well, doesn't matter now. Free iron is free iron. Day 69. Don't laugh. That joke is temporary. The glory of Rome is forever. I saved up enough delicious XP orbs to enchant my helmet at 23 levels. I was thinking of naming it Noggin Blocker, but it wasn't imperious enough. Noggin Guardian has a better ring to it. Next up was the chest plate, or as I like to call it, the Moob Plate. 13 more levels for that guy. I took a break, and while I was working on the farms, another drown test me for superiority. No surprise that it wasn't up to the task, but at least this one did me a favor. It dropped me a trident. 
Now I have the power to challenge Mighty Neptune. Or at least I would if I ever planned on using a trident. I'm always excited when I can get one, but I'm pretty sure I've never actually used one for practical purposes. On day 70, not a whole lot happened. Another day of fun rolling for enchantments all day long. The next day, however, was a good day for weapons. My luck was back and I was able to get both Power 5 and Sharpness 5 almost immediately one after the other. I began by adding Sharpness 5 and Looting 3 to Razzle Dazzle to increase my damage and hopefully net me more mob drops. I was starting to feel good about my damage inflicting capabilities. It's important that armor is not only protective, but also functional and versatile. To that end, I made a new pair of tearaway chaps. All the boys love these. I was so close to a full set of enchanted armor, but I needed more XP. While I work on that, I have a fun fact for you. This is actually my first time playing a hardcore world for any length of time. I've been playing Minecraft for years now, but always in survival. I've been terrified to try hardcore because losing hours and hours of work would crush me. Making this video has made it easier because I at least have the video journey of my progress if one day a baby zombie takes it all away. In any event, I'm having a lot of fun, and I hope you are too. When I finished gathering XP, I enchanted my boots with a whopping 27 levels. But these were no ordinary boots. These were stomping boots. You decide if I made stomping on Bugs boots, or it's Saturday night at 2am and your favorite song comes on stomping boots. The time had come. I removed my, at best, equestrian level iron armor, and took one last look at the mortal Legion V. I donned my new gear and reviewed all the various benefits, and now it's official. I am Augustus level Imperial in my new shiny protective shell. I went to test out Depth Strider, which makes me move more quickly underwater, and I was very happy that- Whoop! Stab it in my mouth! Hmm. Free sushi. I enchanted a second pickaxe with all the usual things plus Silk Touch. I named it after that strumpet from across the Mediterranean that Mark Antony keeps going on about. Now I've been in this world a very long time, and I've spent the whole time sleeping under the stars. While this isn't a problem for a legionary, I did think it was high time that I had a house of my own. I had plans to build it next to slash under the hill behind my base, so I took Cleopatra's silk to clear out the stone left over from earlier terraforming efforts. I wanted to use some for my new house, so it worked out well. I began to lay out the foundations of my new home in this cozy corner I had created, and use some blocks placed at certain intervals to keep things even. I'll typically make a mistake somewhere that makes me backtrack, so this was a way to attempt to avoid all of that. I tried a mix of deep slate and stone bricks around the base and doorways. I really liked the look of both, but I didn't want to go one solid color all the way through. I had a general idea of what I wanted, but for the most part, I was winging it and going off what I organically thought of as I built. When it was getting late in the day, I started clearing out the dirt to get an honest floor laid out. And for the floor, again, I didn't want just a solid block all throughout. I tried out a few different things, switching between different blocks and various patterns, and worked my way toward the center as I experimented. I ended up with sort of a wood and stone mix with a big X in the middle. Let's say the X stands for exceptional, just like me. Obviously, I'd need to be able to watch for raiding parties, so I started to place glass blocks around my doorways for windows. I wanted it to be open and have a decent view of the outside whenever I was in my house, so I looked for a few ways to incorporate glass windows where I could, including a larger one facing the front of the structure. I was toiling away when I definitely got distracted by the night sky. Another reason I use shaders. There are some details and beautiful views that just don't come out in vanilla Minecraft. On day 76, I started working on the hobbit hole portion of my base. Well, not so much a hobbit hole as a convenient space I could use for my future storage solution. I started with a small room, then continued to dig. I wanted to see if this emerged anywhere that I could use as an escape tunnel or convenient path in this direction rather than climbing over the village hill. I ended up running into a cave, so I followed it out for a bit to see where it came out. While I was lighting up the area, I noticed a place further down and away that already had torches placed. This must have come out somewhere in my mind, I just wasn't sure exactly where. I didn't want to get distracted, so I ran back and kept working on the house. While I'm working on this, do you want to hear some interesting facts about Rome? 
Did you know that Romans believed that Rome was founded by Romulus and Remus, twin brothers abandoned at birth who were raised by wolves? Here's another one for you. You know the Colosseum, the massive structure that had gladiator battles and stuff? Did you know the Romans would flood the entire thing just so they could have boat battles as well? They would even add alligators to the water. Crazy Romans. One more for you. Romans used to wash their clothes with something kind of gross, and I'll give you a hint, it wasn't Tide Pods. Look this one up, I wouldn't want to smell the laundry in Rome. Anyway, back to it. I started on the storage room, and I wanted a way to organize and identify what each chest was for. More good news for my cows, because I'd need to make a good amount of these item frames using leather. I started organizing in a general way, you know, stone blocks in one, wood items in another, so on and so on, I'd probably get more specific in the future. Once again, I got distracted like a squirrel by the pretty lights coming in through my skylight slash upper floor. It was around then I noticed my hand looked different for some reason. I took a good look at myself and, oh my stars, it appears an evil enchanter of some kind cursed me and changed my appearance. It definitely wasn't that my Minecraft skins got screwed up somehow. I'm sure it'll resolve itself. I wanted to make a brewing station in my new house, even though I wasn't completely done building the house yet. I was itching for adventure, so I went back to the nether. I'd need a few more blaze rods and never actually got any nether wart, which I'll need for most potions, including a few I'd like to have for the ender dragon fight. I ran back to the nether fortress I found with a blaze spawner and began by grabbing a couple blaze rods. I found my way into the rest of the fortress and this place was big. I was worried about getting lost, so I used torches as my breadcrumbs, so I'd hopefully be able to find my way back. I encountered a wither skeleton or two in my travels, and though the wither wasn't on my hit list for this video, finding some wither skeleton skulls now certainly wouldn't hurt. That wasn't in the cards today, but nether wart was. I looted the room of all the nether wart and soul sand, so I could become something of a nether wart farmer myself. On the way out, I used Pot Shot to grab a couple more Blaze Rods just in case, and then engaged in mortal combat with this crossbow-wielding piggy blocking my path. He apparently didn't hear I had brand new enchanted armor and weapons. Once I got back home, I planted my nether wart in the little cubby beneath my stairs and packed away the other goods I had collected on my trip in my new storage bins. I had to rip off the band-aid on day 78 and get organized. I still had chests out by my old bedroom under the stars, and I needed to run back and forth a couple two-tree times in order to transfer my existing goods into the new storage room. I of course needed to label as I went, which required more leather. Your sacrifice is not in vain, my children. I then did a bit of work in the apothecary corner. I built up enough for a novice chemist, with a brewing stand and a chest full of brewing ingredients, and carved a bit of room out on the ground so I had a place for a water source. It wouldn't be a lot of trouble to just make glass bottles, fill them with water over by the uh, sea, and store them nearby, but I didn't want to get into the groove of brewing and realize I was out. This would let me fill bottles on the go like the busy working legionary I am. While I was glad to have a sort of house, the fact that it was only half done made me a bit sad. It was looking good so far, though. I'd get it done soon, but first, the wanderlust hit me. I grabbed my boat for a short expedition along the coast to see what was nearby. While I was on my way, I noticed what could only be a shipwreck beneath the surface. I went to investigate and see what loot the unfortunate seafarers had left for me. One chest was mainly stinky potatoes. The second wasn't bad. Kind of cool that I found emeralds, but at this point I had burned through hundreds in my feverish capitalism, so I was a bit underwhelmed. While I was out, I grabbed some kelp just in case. No plans yet, but eventually I may need it to make water elevators. Remember that single dark oak sapling earlier in the video? Well, I found a dark oak forest, so before I went back to base, I had to take part in some deforestation. Both for the good of the land, trees have it coming, but also so I could finally grow some beautiful dark oak back at my base. And speaking of, I cleared out the mega spruce trees I had sitting around with the aid of Choppy Boy to make room for the new guy in town. I planted my dark oak saplings, properly this time, gave it some powdered Red Bull for good measure, and started collecting some dark oak. I was beyond tired of collecting whatever fell from my trees to the ocean floor, and I don't know why I didn't do this sooner, but I finally went around laying down slabs around my tree growing area. 
This way I could just run across collecting everything and not worrying about risking my life in the briny deep. On day 81, I got back to working on the house. I started adding some fences to the second level for safety and added detail, and placed a few lanterns to light the place up. I wanted to build up the second level so it was almost like a mini tower, and I went with dark oak planks from my newly felled trees. I thought the change in building blocks would be a nice contrast rather than going with full stone or deep slate. As night descended, I decided to take a quick break for some target practice. The mobs happily lined up for a perfect shooting gallery game. I also used some resources I had been gathering to craft 12 Eyes of Ender. Ideally, the end portal would have a few populated for me, but if not, I'd need 12 total. Actually, probably more, as a few will typically break while searching for the end portal, so I may need to make more of these later on. I did some maintenance on my small netherwort farm near my brewing station just to make sure that I was stocked up. I'd be using some of this in preparation for my battle with the Ender Dragon. In particular, slow falling potions should come in handy. I went back down to the mine to do some more strip mining, both to collect deep slate that I'd use for builds and for the excitement of finding more diamonds. While mining, I actually found a vein of two, with this little sneaky guy hiding for a total of three. I decided to finally make a blast furnace to smelt my ores more quickly. I was going to throw in the iron I just found in my mine, but I think my brain stopped working for a minute because I put the iron ingot in instead of the iron ore. After a brain reboot, I got it right. I went out to harvest the rows of watermelon I planted a bit ago for villager trades, but the only tool I had silk touch on so far was my pickaxe. I'm 100% certain there's a better way to do this, but I'm too lazy to figure it out right now, so mining watermelons with a pickaxe it is. I went back down to the lava pool I had turned into obsidian to mine a bit more. I had an idea to create ender chests, so when I found the stronghold, I could have one ender chest at my base with any supplies I might need, then I could plop another one down closer to the stronghold and end portal for easy inventory management. I started today by eating Clarabelle's cousin right in front of her. Then a thought hit me. This looks like a beautiful morning for an expedition. I grabbed my eyes of Ender, stood for a moment, looking majestic so my iron golem could gaze upon my majesty, and threw the first eye to get a bearing on the nearest stronghold. It sailed into the sky over my farms, leading toward the ocean. It looked like I was going on a sea voyage. I got in a boat and started rowing in the direction of the eye, and holy moly, there is nothing in any direction I look. This is kind of off-putting, being in the center of the ocean with no land in sight in every direction. Not sure I've ever experienced that before in Minecraft. Eventually, I followed the eyes to the shore by a small forest and jungle biome. It turned me around a couple times right by the shore until the eye went straight down, indicating I had found the stronghold. I made a bunch of ladders so I could dig down and have a way to get back up when I reached the appropriate depth. I was digging a two block wide hole so I could see a few blocks down before actually falling, just in case this opened up into a large cave or directly into a lava pool. Eventually my mineshaft did open up into an underwater cavern. I really didn't want to try to circumvent it, so I used the same trick as I did before for underwater caves. I gathered sand and started placing it around my mineshaft so that it would fall and build up a wall against the water on all sides. I then filled in the center to remove the water blocks, and then dug that sand back up to continue my hole without having to deal with the water. Once again, as I mined down, I hit an opening. This time there was a welcoming committee here to congratulate me on making it this far. I had found a mob spawner and mossy cobblestone room. I played with my new friends for a bit before I got tired of the game and told them we were done. I lit up the room to prevent any other mobs from spawning and took a look in the chests. I was able to find my first music discs in these chests, which I will most likely never use but cool stuff nonetheless. I noticed this cave went on in one direction and I thought why not light this up a bit before I keep digging to look for the stronghold. So I went down the path, opened it up a bit for clearance, and placed torches to keep any mobs from surprising me in the future. Near the end of this path, I noticed stone brick, and apparently my mineshaft was a bit off. This was actually the stronghold, so I was very lucky finding that mob spawner and looking down this pathway. If I hadn't, I would have missed the stronghold. Not only that, but the first room I found was actually the portal room. The stronghold can be pretty massive, so it can be a pain to find this room even after finding the stronghold. 
and it just so happened it was the first room I came across. I looked around a bit more and found a second mob spawner room with chests, and it had some of the same music discs. Apparently the game wanted me to have backups in case I accidentally got scratches on one of the copies. I then looked at the end portal and, yep, this is certainly my luck. Not a single Eye of Ender was pre-populated in the end portal. I don't know the exact chances, but these do have a chance to randomly spawn in with an Eye of Ender already there. Wasn't looking that way for me, so I would need the full 12 Eyes of Ender to activate this. I'd come back later to do that, but in the meantime, I started to organize my loot in the Ender chest I had set up just outside the mineshaft. I'd need to head back home and get this all sorted, as well as complete some additional prep work before the Ender Dragon fight. At least I was all set with the location of the end portal now. On day 85, I went hunting Endermen in the Nether in order to stock up on Ender Pearls for additional Eyes of Ender. Even though I farmed any of these boys who visited the base up until now, I was still short. I crafted the 12 Eyes of Ender I'd need for the portal and stored them away. On day 86, I started brewing the potions that would make the Ender Dragon fight a bit safer. I began by putting my water bottles into the brewing stand and using some of the Nether Wart I had been saving to make awkward potions which is the first step in most potions. I then added some phantom membranes that the friendly birds had been dropping for me. The result was potions of slow falling for when the ender dragon decides to send me flying. I then did the same thing using nether wart and blaze powder to brew potions of strength, which will make razzle dazzle pack even more of a punch. I then remembered that adding redstone to potions will increase the time of the effect, so I'd have to use fewer potions overall. It more than doubled the time each potion would last, so that's very helpful overall. I couldn't fight the Ender Dragon while my animals still had no roof. What if it rained when I was gone? They'd be so sad. So I finally got back to it, finishing up the roof to cover the whole barn area. By nighttime, I had finished the job and now it finally had a roof from all angles, not just while looking at it from the front. Since I was in roof building mode, I went back over to my house to start working on the roof of my tower. I wanted to follow through with the skylight theme I had for my second floor, so I experimented with a leveled roof and glass that would allow me to see the stars while working late at night. I also lit up the roof so I wouldn't have to hear mobs creeping around on the roof all the time. I actually liked how this was turning out from the interior. Nice design, and it lights up the place. From the exterior, however, I wasn't really a fan. Something looked weird about it, and I think it has to do with the stone overhanging where it meets the dark oak. It doesn't look as bad from the high vantage point, but there's definitely some detail I need to fill in to make this look a bit better. Before the day was over, I started adding a bit more to the roof. I added a bit more overhang to the roof, and I think that's looking a bit better. But there's still something missing. Then it hit me. What makes every single build look ten times better? That's right. I went over to my tree farm wielding my shears of destiny and went absolutely ham collecting leaves. I got as many as I thought I'd need to improve the look of my house, then kind of spaced out watching the remaining leaves despawn as the day ended. I took the stacks of leaves over to my barn to add some detail there, and that did the same for my house. This is so much better. I don't know what it is, but as soon as you add leaves to a structure, it really pulls it all together and makes it look that much more detailed. On day 89, I walked around appreciating my new home. I could officially say I was now a homeowner, and maybe my parents will stop calling me a bum who sleeps outside every night with cows and sheep. In fact, I did such a great job that my new home was featured on a TV show. Welcome back to Better Minds and Gardens. Today, we're walking through this beautiful seafront property within walking distance of the nearest village. This two-level recent development comes standard with skylights and easy access to a mineshaft for additional storage. This home is valued at 2,700 emeralds and is sure to be the envy of each and every villager. I wrapped up the day by heading back to the nether to see if I could fix my broken portal. The extent of my plan was basically break the nether portal that spawned in underground. Then I could head back through the portal into the nether and back again to see if it would now link back up with the one at my base. Long story short, the plan failed, and the underground portal just regenerated itself. Oh well. Day 90 was another chore day. I worked on my crops to get more produce, harvested my bamboo farm for more sticks, 
and went back to trade with the plebs to ensure that all of my gear was back up at full durability. I started day 91 by showing off my perfect aim at this ghast. I didn't miss once. I wanted to explore the nether a bit more and collect some additional resources. While building across a gap, I decided that rather than going around this lava or blocking it off at the source, I would try to build a tunnel under it. Long story short, every single block I placed made this worse. What seemed like a simple task, I made a big issue. I was at this for an embarrassingly long time before I gave up and took a short swim in the lava to just do what I should have done at the beginning, block the stream so it couldn't fall onto me at all. When the lava cleared, I was able to see the single block that I missed that made this whole tunnel idea fail. I went back home to organize the resources I had collected on my day trip to the nether, and smelted the gold I was able to collect using silk touch, avoiding the process of combining gold nuggets into ingots. I did some quick trading, and then started to collect a few of the potions I created in anticipation of my upcoming boss fight. I realized I had a bit of time left before I hit 100 days, and I wanted to wait a bit before the Ender Dragon fight, so I decided to start on a quick side project. I started to clear off and then terraform the hill behind my house. I had something in mind, but I'd need a flat area to start. I checked out the sort of dirt pyramid I had created behind my house, and now it was all set to be the final thing I did after slaying the Ender Dragon. With that, I rode back over to the entrance of my hole that leads to the end portal, and went around clearing out the area of any trees. I may want to build a structure here in the future, so I wanted to have the space available. As the sun went down, I sat and watched all the leaves despawn once again because I enjoy the time lapses. That night I did some warm-up fighting with the mobs, and made an attempt to get an achievement by hitting a skeleton from a long way away. Look at that. Like I said, I have perfect aim. I finished the day by getting the Sniper Duel Achievement. Day 96. This was finally the day. I checked off two of the goals I set at the beginning of these 100 days, and now it was time to conquer the third. I placed 11 of the Eyes of Ender into the end portal, got interrupted by this little cockroach, then placed the final eye to activate the portal. I was mesmerized for a second by the look of the portal with shaders on. Ooh, pretty. I regained my wits and jumped in. Luckily I brought wood blocks with me because I spawned off to the side outside of the end island. I started building across and already the ender dragon was very upset with my presence. She started shooting me with spicy breath, so I jumped to the end island and bravely hid as I made sure I had full health. Some of the endermen were also way too excited about my sudden appearance, so I had to calm them down with razzle dazzle. I started using my water bucket to climb up the pillars to punch the end crystals so the ender dragon couldn't use them to heal. While up here, I used my impeccable aim to shoot a few more of these, then drink my potion of slow falling just to be safe. Somehow, immediately after, I got dragon's breath in my bottle even though I didn't try. I'm just that good. I kept taking out the end crystals, floating down to the next few towers when I needed to, and kept using my water bucket to get at any end crystals that I couldn't reach with my bow. Eventually I destroyed them all, and started to hit the ender dragon with my bow. I did a decent amount of damage before she landed. I guess she was jealous seeing the enderman get a taste of razzle dazzle and wanted a bit for herself. Because I'm a brave and stalwart legionary, I decided to attack her head on, not even bothering to get under her when it was safe. This was working fairly well and I was doing a ton of damage until she had enough and punted me into the air. My slow falling effect had expired, but luckily, it wasn't a long fall. I cleaned up some more endermen that tried to step to me, and took aim for the final shot against the ender dragon. And with that shot, my goal was complete. I was now the master of this domain, and the ender dragon was no more. I was showered with tasty XP orbs in recognition of my accomplishment, which I gobbled up immediately. I went to collect the dragon egg as my prize by placing a torch and breaking the block beneath it. As it fell into the torch, I picked it up and got the next generation achievement. I bridged over to the portal, but this was going to be an adventure for the next 100 days. As I wrapped up in the end, I showed off my bad self with all my Enderman fans and then jumped into the portal to return home. 
With all the goals I had set for myself complete, I had one last thing I needed to do before the 100 days were over. I crafted some stained glass that I'd be needing and began building up on the terraform hill I created before I went to the end. Let me know if you can tell what I'm building, but here's a hint. I needed something towering over my base that showed the whole world who had conquered this land. I kept building up using many of the various blocks I had collected over my 100 days. I also added lanterns to ensure no mobs would infest my latest creation. I was close to wrapping up as the final day approached. And here we are, day 100. On the final day, I revealed my subtle way of showing everyone in the world that this land is now a part of the Roman Republic, with yours truly running the show. Before the end of the final day, I built up a temporary tower so I could watch my base in all its glory be bathed in rays of light from the setting sun. And that's how I survived 100 days in Minecraft Hardcore. This is the first hardcore world I've committed to, and I have to say, I really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to the next 100 days, and I'm excited about the possibilities now that I'm established in this world. I really hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it. Leave a comment and let me know your thoughts, and any suggestions that you may have. I'll see you all in the next 100 days.